Well, this is gonna be a fun one. So check it out. I saw this tweet recently where it was basically a picture and it was asking, do you think that the past exists even if you can't access it? And it was a very intriguing question to me. So what I did was I screenshotted it and put out a poll on my Instagram and asked my followers, does the past exist even if you can't access it? And much to my surprise, the answers came out to being 50-50. People were completely divided on this and no, there were only two people who voted on this. I'll tell you what my thoughts are and you can let me know if you agree or disagree in the comment section. Does the past exist? Well, when I think about this conundrum, I'm immediately reminded of Schrodinger's cat. Now, if you don't know what Schrodinger's cat is, it's basically a thought experiment that was put forth by a man named Schrodinger. And he basically said, if I put a cat inside of a box with a device that has a 50-50 chance of killing the cat, is the cat alive or dead before I look in the box after giving it some time? What he found was, if we think from a quantum physics perspective, before you look into the box, the cat exists in a superposition of both being alive and dead at the same exact time. And the moment that you observe it is the moment that it chooses which path or which timeline that it's gonna go on. And this is also based off of another principle in quantum physics, which is called the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which basically says that if you imagine like electron going around an atom, you can either know how fast the electron is going, AKA how much momentum it has, or you can know the exact position around the atom that electron is in because particles in a quantum level tend to act like either waves or particles, which brings us back to the time question. For the longest period of time, most people did not understand if gravity was caused by a graviton, which is a particle, or a wave, like a gravitational wave. And in the year 2015, something called the LIGO, which is the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. This is a big freaking facility that was invented and put millions of dollars of funding into just to maybe detect gravitational waves if they did exist. And after they built this thing in the year 2015, they actually did observe a gravitational wave that they concluded was caused by two massive black holes billions of light years away. These two massive black holes collided, causing this big ripple in the space-time continuum. And after a billion years of traveling, that gravitational wave hit Earth and was finally detected by LIGO. So this is a big moment in history that's relatively recent because it proves not only Einstein science theory of relativity, but it also proves that gravitational waves do exist and gravity is caused by waves and not particles called gravitons. So let's go back to the time question. When I think about Schrodinger's cat is that time actually exists in a superposition of all possibilities at the same exact time. And the moment you observe it, that's the moment that it chooses which timeline that you take. Somewhere in the past, the timeline skewed into this tangent creating an ultimate 1985. But the more you know about exactly what's going on and which timeline you're in, the less you know about all the other possibilities out there, kind of like Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So to sum this up, what I believe is possible is that all versions of the future exist simultaneously in a superposition. And depending on the actions that you take right now, that's the timeline that you actually observe and choose and actually experience at the same time. But along those lines, if the past did exist, and if we were hypothetically able to access the past, I believe that you can only access the version of the past that you actually experienced based off the actions that you took. Which brings me to another conundrum that comes up to my mind, which is, what exactly is time? Now, this is where it gets crazy. If you think about how many seconds, how many hours are in one 24 hour day, you gotta realize that our version of time is based off of how long it takes our planet to go around our sun and how long it takes our planet to do one revolution as we're going around the sun. In other words, our entire perception of time is completely based off of a few factors, which is how big is our sun, how big is our planet, how fast does our planet turn, and how fast does it go around our our sun. But you got to realize if we were on a different size planet around a different size sun, our conception of what a day is and what a year is would be completely different. And when you break down a year and a day into its smaller parts, that's where you get into seconds, milliseconds, hours, which means you got to wonder if we were on a different solar system on a different planet around a different star, would our version of time be completely different? Would we even perceive time the way we currently do? Or would it even be a factor in the way that we go about our day to day lives? I don't know. So you got to wonder, what even is time? Which brings us back to Einstein and gravitational waves. Einstein basically said that there's a time-space continuum that really revolves around the theory of relativity. And it's almost like if you took a trampoline and you put a heavy object in the middle of the trampoline, well, obviously things would start to go towards the trampoline. If you put a ball on there and you were standing in the middle of it, the ball would roll towards you. And he says this warping of the time-space continuum is actually what gravity is. And so that said, if 
gravity does exist in a wave form, then that's basically meshing time and space in one. And so theoretically, if you had a technology that could harness the power of gravitational waves and could actually manipulate gravitational waves to however you see fit, then you got to think that you probably would be able to access not only the past, but also the future. <coughs> Sensational. Which brings me back even further to what we talked about earlier, the gravitational wave that we detected at LIGO that allowed us to understand that gravitational waves are a real thing and Einstein was correct. That gravitational wave was caused by two super massive black holes colliding. All that destruction, all that power, that's a lot of energy. And so for you to harness a gravitational wave, it's gonna take huge amounts of energy that man is probably not capable of with our current understanding of physics and our current level of technology. But that brings in the other question of videos that we've made in the past, UFOs, extraterrestrials. A lot of people think that UFOs and flying saucers and if these things are actually real, they operate on free energy technology, which means that you could essentially create large amounts of energy out of essentially nothing and can actually manipulate gravitational waves to travel faster than the speed light of the universe, which is actually the speed of light. And so theoretically, if you could harness a gravitational wave, not only could you travel faster than the speed of light by riding an essentially a gravity bubble, but you could also break that speed limit of the universe and access different periods of time based on wherever you want to ride that gravitational wave because of the time-space continuum. And so I ask you, do you think that the past exists or not, even if you can't access it right now? My opinion is yes, the past exists, and yes, all versions of the future exist, and if we could hypothetically somehow harness free energy technology or technology that can create a gravitational wave, then theoretically, maybe you just might be able to access the past and whatever version of the future that you want to access. But either way, this is a very mind-blowing conundrum. And if you thought this was mind-blowing, just wait until you see this video right here of three videos of UFOs using gravitational wave technology that NASA does not want you to see. Go check out that video.